Yeah, I had to hit that button to make it official because, of course, we're going to have to do post-production at some point. And uh, jazz it up for the folks that don't like to tune in for the live stream. I don't know what their problem is. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, back for his third round on the Liberty Radio Fricasseer. The Hyona is back <laughs> in the building. <coughs> How you doing this That's evening, right. sir? Oh, I, I got no complaints. Not, nothing but gratitude. You know, I, I'm just swimming in the grace of the constant benevolence of Great Pumpkin. Shout out Great Pumpkin. Shout out Great Pumpkin. Uh, he does uh, provide. And, and you, you know... I can tell you that the power of Great Pumpkin continues to grow every year because literally pumpkin spice Starbucks drinks have been in the gas stations for over three weeks now. Man, it's it's still August, Drizzle. It is August. That Usually they don't start rolling that crap out until after Labor Day. What's going on? That's right. But again, the power of the Great Pumpkin yeah. continues to increase. I mean, it, it it's... It's a trajectory even with a steeper incline than run to Satan. I'm sorry, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> so is it is it the power of the great pumpkin or is it the power of crony capitalism and, and American corporatism? And just well, the ever uh, uh, encroaching uh, overreach of the next holiday season. Because, of course, you always got to get ready for the next season, right? Even though you're not even through with the one that you're in currently. Because you got to spend money in that one. But you also got to spend money in the next one, too. So you got to you gotta be, like, strategic and shit. Well, well it turns out that Great Pumpkin is a, a genetically modified organism. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker. I, I know, I know, folks, but uh, I, I've been assured that um, Great Pumpkin is um, safe and effective. So, and uh, apparently, well, there's not been a great number of reported uh, sequelae events or um, adverse events, as it were. Um, and so, you, you can totally trust it. Totally trust it. I got some good friends at the CDC, and, and they even smoke weed. It's pretty cool. Nice. It's nice to know that the, the CDC is so liberal these days. They're very liberal, very liberal. And in fact, um, you know, I have it on. Well, I'm, I'm going to protect my sources, of course, as, as a journalist always should. Absolutely. Uh, shout out Gray Zone. <laughs> and no, no. What was the one? What was the one that Glenn Greenwald started? Intercept. The Intercept. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, hey, part of government. the Omid Yard is, is Network. Is there a whistleblower that you need to intercept? Call the Intercept. <laughs> we'll make sure of it. <laughs> Greenwald's your man. Absolutely. <laughs> Shout out Reality Winner. Anyways. Um, oh God. And that other poor kid, the, the drone operator. What was his name? Daniel. Uh, what was his name? Uh, geez, has hasn't the Intercept pushed like three or four different uh, whistleblowers just straight into federal custody? I believe so. Uh, yeah, what are I the believe chances? They're batting a thousand. It's incredible. <laughs> like, what are the chances, Drizzle? <laughs> I mean, you know, some people are just blessed with exceptional <laughs> talent. You know, and, and that's that's just all there is to it. That's that's all you can say, because, of course, we live in a merit based society. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And if you have too much merit, you're never going to succeed. As we both know, the key to success in 21st century America is failure. Mm. Fail your way to the top. Um, there's a new book coming out from Kamala Harris pretty soon. Um, that's going to explain it all with cackles. <laughs> what what is the title going to be, or should I even ask? Uh, the title is parentheses cackling parentheses. <laughs> Just cackling. <laughs> I thought it would be something like always bring knee pads. Uh, you know, honestly. 
imagine the dream ticket of cackle and cankle or cankle and cackle mm. Hillary and Kamala Ooh. and just move Biden out of the way. Well, Surely they, they wouldn't just yeah. scrap Biden for somebody else in the middle of this election season. I couldn't Newsom. imagine. What? I, I just could not imagine the DNC throwing uh, P. Paul Biden off the train and getting somebody else. Well, I mean, you know, Uncle Joe, is he's starting to get a little punchy, you know. It, it, it's getting to the point now where they're having trouble hiding it. I mean, hell, you wrote a song about the man, or well, I, I don't know if wrote is the right word. You composed uh, an epic musical score dedicated to our our beloved president's incontinence. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, how much more obvious can you get? You know, um, the thing that continues to beguile me about that song is that uh, as much effort as I normally try to put into my music, um, that was... Um, really the result of mushrooms and you know mushrooms helped write i pooped on myself um and was able to get me to the next level of linguistics to where i where i can begin naming my songs with just sounds instead of actual words and so that song is technically called (laughs) by hyona hence the use of the parentheses right but of course, I always have to say fart noise because I'm I'm not fluent in that language yet. So I just have to, right. you know, fumble my way through it as as I do pretty much uh, every single time I go on the air here on Liberty Radio. So, there's uh, a beauty. There's a true inner beauty about that song, though, uh, Drizzle, and that is not everyone's going to make the same fart noise. This is and true. That's okay. that's okay. You know. As our good friend singing about the rich men north of Richmond would point out, it's the diversity of our fart noises that enriches our the fabric of our nation. That's right. It takes all sizes and tones, ladies and gentlemen. It really That's does. Right. It, it, it takes a whole village of buttholes, uh, Hillary. The, the, this is really, you know, we're, we, we continue to elevate the level of the national conversation drizzle. And and for that, I thank you. We really do. I mean, it's, it's one of our missions here at Liberty radio. It really is. Uh, well, I don't know if elevates the right word. I, that's, we'll figure that out later. Uh, there's no need to think about that now. Well, All I right. would like to think it is an elevation of sorts because we're staying at a certain altitude while we, while we allow everything else to just sink lower and lower. Thus, we are elevating. Yeah, we're elevating ourselves. And I guess anyone who wants to come along for the ride, which is fine. We got plenty of room. So uh, hop on in, folks. Now, oh, but breaking news, breaking news. I've got uh-oh. our other correspondent um, at the mayor of Lahaina at his house here. He's asked him again. How many children are missing? How many children's bodies have been identified in the uh, terrible, uh, terrible fire there in Lahaina? And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. He he was uh, escorted away by uh, Maui police. Uh, Never mind, uh, Drizzle. Back to you. (laughs) Well, that's a shame. We, We almost had breaking news here on Liberty Radio, folks. We were I keep trying close. to find out. I keep trying to find out, buddy. It's that they're stonewalling us. I know. I know other people are trying to find out too, and, and they're getting the same treatment. So don't, don't feel like they're just singling you out. All right. They're, they're actually doing this to everybody. Nobody's yeah. getting a straight answer out of them. And did you see what they did to my buddy from Louisville, Kentucky? Jeez, man. What's that? Lay it on me. The that the the kid from Louisville, Kentucky, he just flew to Maui. Uh, what was it, two three days ago? Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the cops just kept uh, assaulting him and pushing him, knocked him down to the ground, slapping him around. Um, and like the weird. Who thing is he was, working for? Oh wait, I forgot. It never mind. He doesn't matter. He, he was an independent journalist. Fuck him. Oh. <laughs> right. 
wait a second. I'm an independent journalist too. Well, well, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually what the law says. Fuck you. Uh, if you, you know, are an I, independent I, I, journalist. I did get an offer to work for a different media organization, Drizzle, but I had to really? turn them down. because I don't want to move to Marion, Kansas. Yeah, I, I'd say that's probably a, a wise decision. Uh, it, Those people least, are scary. Uh, not right now. You don't want to head out there right now. Uh, I don't. I don't think it would be a good life choice. Uh, hang, yeah. hang out, and uh, you know, just run Liberty Radio News for like six months, and then see what the landscape looks like. Then that's what I would. It say. It took me so long to get me and this little dog to Oz. I'll be damned if I'm going back to Kansas. And Oz is great, man. Oz is great, dude. The, the lollipop kids got killer weed, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Oz, uh, you had an unscheduled, uh, what, what do we call it? An unscheduled oh. vacation? Oh, yes. Yes. My sabbatical where I was yes. doing research on the lowest of the lower cast. All right. So... Let's start first with what happened and how you ended up in the pokey. Right. So um, it actually begins not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday, just before uh, an epic version of um, a potluck. Because, of course, we do our potlucks on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, Ten weeks straight now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had, uh, the, the Wednesday previous, I had debuted my new show, uh, Hi Yona Weeds Days, uh, to, to, you know, basically be the 53 foot trailer behind that big rig that we all love as the drizzle on Wednesday evenings. Uh, but anyway, so this last Wednesday, um, uh, let's see. Let, 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 let's 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 check my calendar here. Uh, so that would be Wednesday the sixteenth. That's when it began. Our story begins on Wednesday, August the sixteenth, twenty twenty three, and so I leave out here from my studios here at Countagiste Records on the Ohio Valley, outside of Huntington, West Virginia, and. I go to do my normal routine of Ubering and door dashing and just general gig economy, um, joie de vivre, we'll call it. And uh, so then I'm grinding during the Wednesday night show. And that's why I, I didn't do the second uh, weeds days until this just this past, uh, well, last night. Um, <coughs> so anyhow. Uh, I ended up working nonstop from about 2 p.m. that Wednesday on the 16th until about 11 p.m. Friday. Nonstop. Um, which is uh, more than an eight-hour shift. Um, but I, I piled up about uh, close to $400 during that stretch of about... Um, how many hours nonstop is that? Two From when to when? Wednesday to 2 p.m. Thursday to 2 p.m. Friday. That would be, yeah, that's a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot of hours. That, that's, that may be over 40 hours in one stretch. I'm going to say so. Yeah, Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's over forty eight hours nonstop, and so uh, I got to my last, uh, what would be the last delivery of the night? Pizza, pizza! Shout out Little Caesars, um, and it was about eleven p.m. Friday, the eighteenth. So I uh, I was in a nice little subdivision, fences, and you know shoulders and curbs and all that stuff and it's one of those nice subdivisions where um uh 
like middle class families live. And uh, I, I really don't want to sound like the Republican debate the other night. So I'm going to be careful with my words here. Um, but uh, it's kind of a place where you'll see all the, the women with their their new mom jeans doing what I like to call dry land skiing, mm -hmm. where they're walking, but they're swinging their arms like they've got ski poles. Yep. And so I call it they're, they're dry land skiing through the, the subdivision with their brand new 2023 mom jeans. Yeah. Those Shout are the humans of suburbia. Yeah. And anyway, so I, I, I said, you know, I'm too tired. I keep, I keep having micro bursts of falling asleep at the window uh, and, you know, driving here. So I, I'm just going to pull over and take a little nap. And then when I wake up, I'll drive my happy ass all the way home. Uh, and then, of course, then I'll wake up to the tap, tap, tap on the window. And and I look up and I'm surrounded by public servants um, with um, service pistols and everything. And, uh, well, of course, it was just a wellness check that turned into a Terry stop for all of you practicing uh, attorneys out there. Uh, we do love a Terry stop, um, which that, that's one of the Supreme Court cases. Uh, you know, where, where, you know, they have somehow um, legally legitimized the fact that they can shake you down for your papers, um, basically is what it means. And so, you now let me see your idea. I was like, oh, I'm fine. You know, oh, oh, you're checking on me. Well, I'm fine. I was just taking a nap. I, I'm just going to go now. See, here's all the DoorDash and Uber stuff. And no, no, uh, need your ID, need this, need that. And I was like, well, I mean, uh, for, for a traffic violation. I mean, you pulled up here and keys are out of the ignition. I was asleep and vehicles parked. So, I mean, what, what traffic law have I broken? I mean, this isn't a no parking zone or anything, but, and roll your window down and give me the idea. Well, let's speed it up here. So long story short, um, I was taken into custody. Um, I, I could go into all the particulars of everything that was done to me, but out of respect to George Floyd, I want George Floyd to really get the love and, and concern of people when it comes to being piled on pawn by um, public servants. Cause I mean, hell I'm still alive. So what should I complain about? Right. Um, but they, they uh, ended up uh, when they ran my ID, they found an eight, year old capius warrant from the wayne magisterial court in wayne county west virginia alleging if you could so imagine that eight years ago a police officer allegedly allegedly found the yona possessing marijuana <laughs> i know i uh, which it's insulting to me because it claims that I was possessing 0 0.2 grams of marijuana. So I don't really like to talk about it because anyone that knows me would know that if, if you found me, you're going to find way more than 0 0.2 grams of marijuana. Just uh, give me a cup and I'll pee in it. You'll see. I should hope so. And so then once I'm launched at the jail, apparently there's been issues in West Virginia, particularly with excessive bail and excessive uh, detainment of uh, arrestees uh, without doing a bond or arraignment hearing sometimes for days. Uh, you know, like just throwing somebody in the tank and then not even arraigning them or bonding, bond hearing for like a week. And that got to be mm -hmm. such a problem. So Apparently, they have to do that within 72 hours now in West Virginia. Once you've been booked into the jail, they have 72 hours to uh, get you to a bond hearing or the full arraignment or both. Um, and, of course, thanks to technology, you never even have to leave the jail. They just have a a special little room where you can go in, stand in front of a camera and the judge is on a screen because hello, future time. <laughs> and um, welcome to the 21st century. That's 
where shit got really fucked up for the Yona, you see, because every single other person kept going to the bond room and then being released. No bond hearing for the Yona. No arraignment for the Yona. Now, now for those that are paying attention, I may have pointed out previously that my eight-year-old capious warrant was from Wayne County, which sounds exactly right. like Cabell County. It's easy to get Wayne and Cabell confused. Um, and so when I finally got my bond hearing, my bond hearing was in front of a magistrate for Cabell County who took my eight-year-old uh, capious warrant and transformed it into a brand new 2023 misdemeanor charge for Cabell County, which allowed me to get a full cash $10,000 bond. Oh, well, lucky you. And, um, you know, I meant to ask you last week, do, do you have an extra 10 grand I could borrow? I'll give it back once I go to court. Well, it turns out I didn't need it. Because when my wife went to the magistrate to see if they could do 10% of 10,000, which would be just a thousand dollars cash. I mean, who doesn't have a thousand dollars cash just laying around? I mean, well, unless you're in America. Yeah. Um, yeah I think it's like over 60% of the population now, but go on. Right. Um, and she goes to see the magistrate and Wayne and the magistrate and Wayne is, Oh, well, I don't even think we could enforce this capious warrant because the officer that arrested Anselmo, that's me, um, eight years ago, did not put his name on there, did not indicate that any marijuana had been taken into custody. Um, there's no evidence. There's nothing. He didn't put his name or badge number or anything on this arrest. Uh, so we don't have any way to really even prosecute this case. And furthermore, magisterial court only has jurisdiction for up to seven years. Because, see, not all states even have magistrate court anymore. Most states did away with it because a magistrate doesn't even have to have a law degree, just a high school diploma or GED. But they nice. get to be... Uh, so magisterial court is the lowest level of courts in West Virginia for those that are unfamiliar with the uh, magistrate flex. So, um, but in this case, the magistrate judge is the good guy in Wayne County. Cause he's like, well, I've never seen this guy. And how long has he been in the Western regional jail there? And well, they've never contacted me. I've been on call the whole time. And he's like, well, let me see this thing. And so he's like, yeah, you don't have to give me any money. I'm just going to dismiss this thing altogether. This is a total flim flam. And so he signed the release paper for me to be released. Gave it to uh, my wife, who was there meeting with him. Then she goes and comes to the jail this past Monday to get me out with the paper from the signed by the judge. <laughs> and uh, that was at... Uh, around at about 1 30 or two o'clock this past Monday. And that's when they got me from my uh, cell where I'd been put in the COVID um, segregation housing unit, uh, where I got to enjoy a, a nice three day stay in a solitary box by myself. Why did they put you in the COVID segregation unit? Oh, because I said I had not received the COVID vaccine and I refused the COVID swap. Oh, so you were just dirty automatically. Yeah. And, and you know, but, but thanks to COVID, there's all these new policies at the jails um, when it comes to doing that. And so um, long story short, they, they got me out of there. At, uh, I mean, the booking desk called me up to the front. And so I got to drag all my mat and my orange clothes and everything up to the booking desk. All well, excited. Did they give you all a right. jumper? Did you get a uh, jumper? No, I got the two piece. I got the Bob oh. Barker uh, textiles there with the, the, the shirt top That's the pants, fun. and the uh, orange slippers, as well as uh, I got to keep the white boxer shorts. Ooh. That, that they issued. Um, and, it's kind of weird because it's the only boxer shorts I have where 
you can't thread the pee bob through the front because it's a you know they're sewn on the front and the back unfortunately <laughs> i guess unfortunately. to make it harder i don't know <laughs> so now you either have to lift up one of your um legs and pee through one of your leg holes or you literally okay. have to pull the boxer shorts down which yeah. kind of defeats the whole purpose of wearing male underwear where you can keep the waistband up and just well, yeah. thread through you know well yeah because if you like for me because i'm a tall person my natural inclination would be to pull them down, but then I'm a, I, I'm defenseless from behind while I'm taking a piss, right? Exactly. And that's that's exactly. like not a position you want to be in uh, when you're you're under those circumstances. I mean, and yeah, that's why male underwear and feel female underwear are constructed differently. Mm -hmm. That's right. A man is going to be able to pee and still keep that turd cutter protected. Mm -hmm. I've not seen any panties made where they can pee, but keep the waistband up. Uh, thong. Thong, you just move it to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Thong. The thong would uh, shout out Cisco. Thong, <laughs> the thong, thong, thong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thong, thong is uh, multi use. My God, Drizzle, you're a fucking genius. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, my God. We're a team, buddy. We're a team. We, 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 we fill each other's weaknesses. Yeah, I think we do a pretty good job of that. Uh, it actually seems to work out pretty well. So, Well, well, they finally let me out. They yeah. finally let me out. They, but when, when I got to the booking desk, they've got a little chicken cage where they can lock you in just like a, like a phone booth type chicken cage while you're waiting to be released. And I got to sit in that thing for five fucking hours. Why would they do after that? After they had already received my release. Five hours I've been released and I'm just sitting in a cage at the booking desk. Right. For a five human coop. hours. <laughs> you were in a human coop. And then I get out hours. to the parking lot and my wife is like, oh my God, I've been waiting out here for five hours. Does yeah. that qualify as cruel and unusual punishment, do you think? Um, yes. Yes. I think so, too. Al Cause... Although it could have been even more cruel if uh, I would have gotten to wear the green pickle suit. <laughs> which which is for those that they fear may try to kill themselves. <laughs> the suicide smock. Ah, so now it's it's green now. Wow. The big green padded blanket that mm -hmm. Velcro's together. The pickle suit. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've seen them. Ugh. I think they're different colors in different states, or although maybe not anymore, because honestly, fortunately, I have not been behind bars uh, anywhere in the world since 97, I think. Wow. I think that was the last time. Yeah. That was the last time I got hauled in. I'll tell and you that, what, it's it's so confusing when you engage with the legal system in not just West Virginia, but Virginia. I mean, there, there's something about the Virginia and West Virginia system, the way they disambiguated jurisdiction. And and so for those who aren't aware. Um, you know, the city government and county government are separate in West Correct. Virginia and in Virginia, because that's Correct. how we do it in the old dominion. Um, and so like, if you do something wrong by the courthouse, if it's in the courthouse building itself, you'll have to deal with the county government. But if you're outside the door of the courthouse on the sidewalk. City property. Well, now you're dealing with the city government, which is entirely separate from. So, like, if you've ever looked at a map of Virginia, a good map, and, and you see all these lines carved out inside each county where the cities are, it's because the city government is completely unaffiliated with the county government and reports through its own thing. They even have their own city courts, municipal courts. And then they also have magistrate court, 
but then there's also county district court and county circuit court. And the, the, the wonderful thing is there's enough courts to where you can constantly harass all the poor people all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And some of the cities and <laughs> counties, no, check, uh, Yon is actually right, folks. But check <laughs> this out. It gets even more devious because some of the police forces of these cities and their surrounding counties have dual jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't really matter where you are when they perceive that you're breaking the law, that they can just arrest you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I used to and, live in one of those places. The, the, the cool thing is, which I, I didn't really prepare for this, but um, we, we can definitely do some follow up and we can drop some links in the show notes uh, after oh, the there's no show notes, post. man. There's, there's not even, well, I mean, uh, well, yeah, we're going to produce this. We're going to produce the interview, but yeah, go ahead. Um, but what, uh, what, what's interesting to see is the number of arrests made uh, versus the number of cases prosecuted and convicted, because that's where you see the disparity, particularly in law enforcement with regards to Virginia and West Virginia. There's all kinds of arrests, not so many prosecutions and even fewer convictions, because, of course, it's a team effort between the LEOs, right? Your your cop, your law enforcement officers, and then your district attorneys and your other uh, related prosecutors, who are then going to pick up from the police and then carry the case through court to try to find your ass guilty of whatever they can make up. Um, and as a general rule, uh, the DA or district attorney prosecutor's office, um, as a general rule. They either um, obstruct, invent, or withhold evidence as, as basically a standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, when you look at Virginia and West Virginia, particularly in, in this metric, uh, it's really amazing how few people are actually convicted of any crime. Of, of the many that are constantly arrested mm -hmm. in Virginia and West Virginia, because apparently the plea deals, the courts look at it and they're like, this is nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's dismissed or better yet. Why would you want a trial by jury when we can just cut a deal? Correct. I mean, we've already charged you with 15 things. 13 charges are total bogus, but Hey, 15 charges, just just plead guilty to this one charge and do three years of probation and reporting to a parole officer and pay us $3,000. And then you can go back to your job at uh, Savaro in the mall. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, they also uh, have been known to intimidate prosecution witnesses, which is, it just boggles my mind. You know, like why? Yeah, why it turns you... out our system is kind of broken. It's kind of broken. <laughs> is it? Is it though? Is it broken, or is it working exactly the way that it was designed? Well, they have fixed it. They have fixed the system. So, if you have money, it works fine. Mm. If you have money, it works fine. I mean, money talks. Bullshit walks. Broke motherfucker, stay in jail. There you go. That's how. Yeah, that's how. Uh, that has always been my experience. <laughs> and know, uh, you know Speaking what? of indictments and the court system. Oh yeah. Um, wasn't today the Donald John Trump's great um, arraignment in his Georgia? Uh, what is it? Election interference was indictment. It? Was it arraignment or arrest? Because the only thing that I heard people talking about today was a mugshot. Everybody wanted to see a mugshot. And when I hear mugshot, I'm thinking arrest. Because that's the only time I've ever had my picture taken by the police is when I was arrested and I was being processed and on my way to my little cage. Well, technically what he did was 
what is called an arraignment. And so let, let's just do a little bit of educational moments here with our audience. Um, Go for arrest it. is when um, that Bobby, as our friends and dear old Blighty across the pond would call them, it's when the Bobby, uh, that's a cop, um, when, when the Bobby puts the uh, irons around your wrists, what we would call handcuffs. And so the Bobby has ironed your wrists uh, and you're taking into custody and you can't move your arms away from each other anymore because they're attached with fucking chains. That's arrest. Arraignment is when they say, hey, is your name Christopher Robbins? And is your address the 100 Acre Woods? And, and is that thing over there, Eeyore, your accomplice? And that's when you say, Yes, Your Honor. And then he says, okay, I'm charging you and Eeyore and Mr. Rabbit as co-conspirators in trying to cultivate marijuana in the 100-acre woods, at which point Christopher Robbins would have to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty for conspiracy to cultivate marijuana in the 100-acre woods at which point Winnie the Pooh could then put up a property surety bond in order to get Christopher Robbins released from custody at the arraignment hearing. So technically speaking, Christopher Robbins may not even be arrested. He's just an arraignment is where you answer the judge for any charge he's accusing you of. An arraignment is just where you enter an initial plea to the accusation of the state. Christopher Robbins, uh, you know, um, Commonwealth of Virginia versus Christopher Robbins, case 23-666. And Christopher Robbins enters a plea of not guilty for conspiracy to cultivate marijuana with Mr. Rabbit and Eeyore at the 100 Acre Woods in Albemarle County, Virginia. Uh, and that, that would be an arraignment. And, and after the arraignment, then Christopher Robbins and Mr. Rabbit and Eeyore would sit down with, you know, a good lawyer like maybe Dershowitz or something, if, if he's not busy in bed um, romping with um, Kazakh girls, shout out Borat. No, he's, um, he's too busy running cover for pedophiles. He's, he's not yeah, going to get yeah. in on any of that action. Does not yeah. want the hundred acre wood action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they would. I know some ladies the, who uh, might be into the hundred acre wood action, though. Uh, by the way, uh, Christopher was wanting me to ask you, uh, Drizzle. Do, do you have any contact yes, information for Johnny Cochran? Uh, do not. No, isn't he dead? Oh, yeah. I think he died oh, a couple that... years ago. How he I might break? have died of coof. Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. He might have. I'm break this to Pooh Bear. Oh, geez. Xi Jinping is going to be so disappointed. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking. That. <laughs> I didn't just do that. <laughs> I know. We're going to get banned in China now. Thanks, man. Oh, awesome. no. I'm sorry, Drith. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. We love the PRC here at Grand Theft World. Much the shadow love, band homie. pirate radio on the planet. I swear to God, y'all don't even know. Oh, by the way, for folks who don't know, uh, our uh, our Twitter account got suspended again uh, <laughs> last night. Um, almost exactly twenty four hours ago. Been about uh, twenty three hours and change. I wonder why I hadn't seen your tweets in my feed. Yeah, it's happened again. It's well, happened again. I just want to apologize, Drizzle. You know, I remember when I there think I stepped on a hornet's nest. There, there were some irresponsible NBA basketball players in China that made some unscrupulous comments about the wonderful People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party, which led to uh, some serious issues for the marketing uh, wizards at the NBA. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly don't want that to happen to Grand Theft World's broadcasting privileges all across the, did I say beautiful, beautiful and benevolent People's Republic of China. Uh, yes. And uh, for the record, Xi Jinping, 
Mm -hmm. Does not like honey. Okay, moving on. Yeah. So uh, in the chat, because uh, Ashley uh, from the Union of the Unknowns, Think Change Repeat, is hanging out on the broadcast tonight, and she is curious what the violation was that got the Liberty Radio account suspended. Do, do you think I should let everybody know? Like, is, is that something that should become public knowledge? Because I haven't made it public knowledge. Hmm. Because there's mm. the, the reason why is there's a series of events that led up to the account getting suspended. And I'm not fully convinced that the tweet that the algorithm highlighted uh, and suspended the account for seven days for was actually what got the account suspended. <laughs> if you follow uh, what I'm laying down. Well, th there there seems to be a point at which once you become the target mm -hmm. that they have locked upon, then they just find a way Anything. Yeah. to get rid of you. Uh -huh. uh, and it doesn't even have to be legitimate. It can even be for a generally an innocuous tweet. But I thought you've it already innocuous. violated, and so it's time to yeet your fucking ass. So they just find a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it now called Twixter? I call it X Twitter. X Twitter. Cause, yeah, because on on the app it it says X. Like if you look at it on your phone, you got the little right. tile there on your phone. It says X. You open it up, and and up in the the top left corner, they have the logo there. It's an X. And even on the web page, when you pull up the web page up there in the top left corner, they got the logo. It's a little X, right? Yeah. And you know, um, I, I'm a big well, fan. But of no, I'm not done. I'm not done because there's there's even more aspects to running a digital enterprise such as Twitter. For example, if you look at the web page, like because I have the two Twitter accounts, right? So I actually open up one in Brave and I open up the other one in Chrome. If I look at the address in uh, the address bar at the top of the browser window, it still says Twitter.com. If, if I look at that little button at the very top of the feed that when new tweets come out, they, they want you to click on that button so that you can get to the new stuff, right? The, the whole uh, uh, operant conditioning bullshit, right? right. Uh, that still says show new tweets. So there is still Twitter life left in the enterprise that apparently Elon hasn't figured out how to how to. Uh, transmutate yet so it's it's x twitter but you know there's still some of that left in there because um i think that's called the uh the the yuccarino phenomenon the yuccarino effect the the yuccarino effect the, the the more you try to purge the the ticks from the back of the dog the more they just cluster around the still bleeding sores uh, right near the anus. That makes sense. That really does. Uh, and, you know, if you're a redneck like biological like me, and shit. you just get a little, uh, you get an old bean can, put a little bit of turpentine down at the bottom of it, you throw all the ticks in there, and then you light the can of turpentine, and, and it pops for about two or three minutes while you're smoking um, crack. Anyways. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I did that when I was at Harper's Ferry the last time hanging out with Beanie Boy Tim Poole, who's also in West Virginia, but you, on the you other smoke, end of the state, Harper's you, Ferry. You smoke crack with Tim Poole? Allegedly. Well, well, not with him. It, it was just in the front yard. It, it was in somebody else's camper, and I'm not going to say who it was because I protect the innocent and the exacerbating. <laughs> All right, so uh, so should I let people know what the tweet was that uh, that got the account eaten? That's that's the ultimate question here. Should we make it public knowledge or should we keep it classified? Um, have you checked with our legal counsel? Um, we have a legal counsel. I thought was that the damn bot again? And what what's going on with that that bot in your system there? Because sometimes I'll get a message from you, and I'm like, 
this does not sound like the the double J that I know. This, this is not drizzle like. It, it seems very mechanical and very. And then I realized, God damn it, I'm getting deep fake again. This huh. fucking GPT shit's getting out of control. Yeah, it gets out of containment sometimes. Because I, you know, w one of the videos we'll be putting out here eventually. Um, I actually confronted the chat bot during one of my uh, uh, videos there because I thought I was talking to you. Mm. And, and so I had to do a trick question on the chat bot. And sure enough, I was able to authenticate and it did not pass the CAPTCHA. It did not pass the CAPTCHA. That, that, that's why we have CAPTCHA. Yeah, but even even now, uh, I don't I don't think the they've changed it. Have you noticed how the captcha has changed? Mm -hmm. It's become more difficult. Like I didn't think it was possible. I really didn't. But they like instead of doing the thing where like pick all the squares that have bikes in them, and like one of them's like a long shot of like a parking lot. You're like fuck. Yeah, they're not doing that anymore, but they're embedding images in other images and being like, pick the, the thing where the, the two embedded images are the same. So they're yeah. getting more sophisticated with that stuff. That has to mean that the, the algorithms are starting to get more sophisticated in terms of what they are capable of recognizing. And you know... The best part about artificial intelligence is the artificial part because, you know, you can just keep making more fake shit. And, um, you know, I'd like to think when it comes to artificial intelligence, just fake it till you break it. There you go. Yeah. Fake it till you speaking, break it. Speaking of fake it till you break it, uh, keep talking because <laughs> I'm out of water. <laughs> so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So uh, what's really exciting now is uh working on all these musical collaborations with other artists and even though we're separated by so much distance you know for example of course i'm working with dead fella over in um the far far east there he's over in uh bangladesh and working with dr dennis and he's over there in uh the united kingdom england and and we're so far flung, but thanks to uh, technology and the interwebs, we're able to record our different parts and, and make music together. And, and so you've heard some of the recent things that I've done with Recycle Bin Laden and mm -hmm. Dr. Kingsley Dennis and Dead Fella and B1 and others. Um, and what's really interesting is... Um, we're not in the same studio. We're not even having like group discussions about the music. We're just submitting our different parts via MP3 or WAV file. And then it's all coming together. And what is just so amazing to me is the fact that all of us collectively are like on the same vibration. We're all on, we're all literally in the same mental place, the same place in the heart, the same place in the soul of feeling to where it's just immediately, immediately collating together like a really fancy copy machine that separates and makes books. You know, you can put a book in and, and then it's got five books forming out of the bottom of it. Um, and so, for example, <coughs> um, there was a song that I did with, um, well, we haven't actually put it together. There, there's two that I've worked on so far with Dr. Dennis, Dead Fella, and RBL. Oh, one wow. of them has already uh, gone out, and that one was called, um, that's the Mr. T song, Pity the Fool. I uh, Pity the Fool, which you've already played. Yeah. I Pity the Fool. I don't remember uh, Kingsley being on that, though. Uh yeah, he, he ended up, uh, RBL ended up doing the vocals on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that actually started out as a, a, a super duper. The other super duper oh, wow. is still in the works. Um, but 
it's just amazing to me. Um, and that's, you know, that's probably the greatest joy that I get out of working with uh, Grand Theft World and our Grand Theft World Liberty Radio fam in general is the fact that so many of us are now in the same intellectual space. We're in the same place uh, when it comes to awareness of uh, the overall fuck shit going on. Um, not necessarily all agreeing on what caused it or where it's going, but at least we all have a genuine, uh, a general common acknowledgement of the situation at hand, even if we amongst ourselves may have individual differing theories as to where this came from or where it's going. At least we all generally can agree shit is fucked up. And, and these are the things that are fucked up. We may disagree upon what fucked them up and what, what further areas of fucking up it will lead to. But at least we're all generally on the same page when it comes to acknowledging shit's fucked up and what exactly is fucked up. Um, and, you know, to be more specific, um, it really comes down to the ability to rise above the false two-party dichotomy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, that's what really distinguishes independent media at this point when looking across the great media scape. Because for most people, mainstream, lamestream media is a non sequitur. It's, it's a non-starter. I mean, and nobody, I mean, it, it, even if you're stuck in the fucking airport on a 45 minute or two hour layover and the only thing on the screens is CNN, luckily you'll have your phone or, or iPod, something to, to tune that shit out with. But uh, we, we've gotten to the point now to where most people are getting their media from independent sources Correct. or non mainstream. And of course, Amongst the non-mainstream, you can run the gamut from Rachel Mad Cow at MSNBC. Which, no, that's mainstream. No, mm -hmm. you got to go independent. So, so let's go into the independent, like Tim Truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to watch him pretty closely, and it's getting some different flavors of um, uh, kind of like a libertarian type space but a little bit clownish. But I like Tim Truth because at least he's able to do the stuff with the balloons where he can fold them into animals, like, mm. like birthday party tricks. Um, but uh, it's kind of, kind of a head scratcher, kind of a head scratcher. Same thing with like, um, what's another one? Stu Peters. Stu Peters. Don't and, get and, me started you know, on Stu Peters, man. Some of that stuff over there, you know, it's like there there will be... Some of that stuff little, over there? There will be a few things that are true, but then everything else is like, wait a second, well, what is that with snake it's, venom? It's again? no different, snake it's no venom. different than tin oh, cast, man. Snake venom, not again. You it's know, all I mean, tabloid journalism. Yeah, it's like Bat Boy on National Enquirer, you know. The, exactly the, like that. Um... You know, there used to be snake oil salesmen, mm -hmm. right? And now we've got snake oil vaccine salesmen. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, the, um, it's the snake venom in the shots that's making you grow fangs, you see. And, and so, you know, it's, it, it's disappointing to see how these different little pockets of independent media communities, which are for all better. I don't know how else to explain it other than like social media silos, like big grain silos. And that way you can keep everyone separate mm -hmm. in their own little echo chamber where they can all agree with each other that it's totally fucking snake venom in the shots that's making you grow fangs. Meanwhile, have you ever seen anybody actually growing fangs? Like, think about it for a second. 
But anyways, it, it, it to me, I think I in one of our previous interviews, I had talked about this fact that, you know, not everyone comes to these levels of awareness at the same rate of speed. And what some of us have figured out, others of our friends and family have not yet figured out. And so you try to be patient. You try to be kind and loving. You don't get to pick and choose your brothers and sisters and parents. So you just have to love them the way they are and be accepting. And you hope and eventually they'll start to figure shit out. And granted, people have kind of come along. But there's more and more people figuring it out. And some of them are like, you know, I was the worst shit lib. And I know I said all these things that were terrible. But can you just forgive me for all that? And let's just let bygones be bygones and move on. So that's been part of the national conversation of, of recent, you know, a little bit of reconciliation and forgiveness and stuff. Uh, so. as people are coming along. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can forgive, but I don't know about forgetting. I, I, I can be a forgiving person, but I'm not a forgetful person. I'm sorry, what was I talking about? So anyways, we've now reached the point of complete madness where so much of the mm -hmm. independent media space is in fact not independent but being led by the nose by the same narrative management that brought you cold, hard babies on the hard, I mean, incubator, incubator babies on the mm -hmm. cold, hard hospital floor, you know, Knowlton and Hughes and, and, and just more of the mind fuck of America while they try to legitimize their own criminal activity to their captive population because make no doubt about it the american population is a captive population americans make up about four percent of earth's global population about one out of 25 human beings on earth is an american citizen citizen more than half of all the human beings on earth currently in jail, on home incarceration, or on monitoring, you know, parole, probation. Um, more than half of all the human beings under those conditions of permanent or temporary jailing are American citizens. Yep. So how does 4% of the world's population account for more than half of the world's prison population Ooh, well that I, know, because, I know the answer i know the answer to that one the freest country in the world no it's because he wrote the damn bill bingo yep <laughs> that's my favorite line from that whole song that i wrote um i recorded three songs coming straight out of jail as soon as i got home first song i recorded was um Second song was Concrete Box. And the third song was um, uh, the Tupac song. I, I, I made a brand new Tupac song called um, Until the End of Time Served. Did you play that one last night? Yes. At, at the, the very beginning end. of the show. Or, yeah, it, 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 I, I led the, I led, the, that was the, the song at the very top of the show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did hear that one then. Um, yeah, uh, brand new Tupac song from the Yona. <clears throat> Featuring the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, where uh, that little boy that grew up at Rancho Tuna outside of beautiful Culiacan in the Sinaloa state of Mexico uh, the one and only Joaquin Guzman Loera, or as we affectionately know him, El Chapo, um, is currently still lodged at the Florence, Colorado Supermax and is featured in that video in a couple of spots there. Um, shout out El Chapo. Um, que pasa, amigo? I'm surprised he hasn't gotten out yet. Oh, it's definitely still him in there and not a body double. Oh, yeah. 
Remember that time when the um, the when the gringos and the DEA convinced oh, really the Mexican so authorities to go into the El Chapo compound in Culiacan to capture El Chapito? That would be baby chapo um yeah yeah and uh they actually got him into custody and had him in custody for about three or four minutes until they realized that they were completely fucking surrounded by narcos on motorbikes with machine guns and then it went terribly bad turns out there was a shootout and um Mm. well um they did not end up taking el chapito into custody and they suffered many deaths Mm. Didn't go as planned. No, it rarely does in uh, in that business. That's uh, that's part of the occupational hazard uh, of working in that industry. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, I'm just hoping that the DEA was able to maintain their uh, supply chain to keep selling drugs in America, so they can continue to. Uh, you know, finance their operations with Mm -hmm. that um, unaccountable uh, revenue stream that they continue to not account for. Shout out Rick Ross, Freeway. Shout out Freeway Rick Ross. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah, shout out Rick Ross for no reason at all. (laughs) Shout out Rick Ross because uh, he exists. Freeway Rick. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Hustling, hustling, yeah, that's right. All right, that's speaking. Right. Oh, speaking, speaking of, of uh, Tijuana, I, I, I almost forgot. I didn't mean to interrupt, but <laughs> Tijuana was just hit by Hillary. Yeah, Hurricane Hillary, which just went yeah, past. Yeah. Oh, well, oh. just before you came on, we were uh, watching that video that you sent to me a couple days ago of the uh, uh, the floodwaters there in uh, Coachella. Mm-hmm. Great place for a concert. Not anymore. It's a little muddy. It's a little muddy. Just wear galoshes. You'll be fine. <laughs> Walk on top of the driftwood that was left behind. Nothing like a burn scar, Driz. Nothing like a burn mm-hmm. scar. But before we get too much deeper into this, uh, and we do have a hard out uh, at midnight, by the way, uh, where can, uh, I'm not saying you have to stay on until midnight, uh, but we're already an hour into this one. Uh, So before we get any deeper, where can people hook up with your work? And of course, we'll drop those links in the notes when this releases. The main place to find Yonich uh, would be Grounded History at manufacturingreality.org. And you just go into our main website there at Grand Theft World Liberty Radio and you look at the top and pull down menu under flavors and you will see grounded history where uh you know j- just like uh, earthworms and night crawlers there is the yona right there threading through the grassroots that's right threading through the grassroots like a night crawler is the yona uh and then also uh for the yona music for those that are musically inclined Go to H I G H Y O N A, that's Hyona dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, and uh, right behind the uh, overflow parking lot where only juniors and seniors get to park, you know, the upperclassmen part of the high school parking lot, where we do our band camp thing during the summertime before high school actually starts back. Um, that's where you'll find the Yona stuff for free, where the woodwinds are doing that sexual stuff with the color guard again, because it's band camp, it's band camp. Story. They're teenagers and they're experimenting. Yeah, we know. I mean, we've all been there. They're woodwinds, Drizzle. They're licking pieces of wood, sucking on saxophone and clarinet penises while they march. Oh. And then uh, don't don't forget the the what is it the flautists the the ones who like to blow, yeah, yeah. They blow well though. They blow well. It's uh, it, some people have a talent for it. Other people have to acquire it as a skill. From what I understand, 
That's right. You know, they actually make. I a played trumpet, so I was using a completely different muscle. Ladies, pay attention to that one. And and for just for full disclosure, the Yona was a trumpet player in marching band mm-hmm. for um, six years. Then even did a little stint in something called DCI, which is uh, short for Drum Corps International. At which point, I put down the old B flat cornet. Picked up what's called a soprano, a soprano horn. It's just a trumpet, trumpet, cornet. You know, technically there's a difference between trumpet and cornet, but, you know, uh, it depends on what they're tuned as well. Because, you know, not all instruments are tuned to the same note. But the important thing to remember is blow your own horn. Blow your own horn. And if you can't get someone to blow it for you, Shout out Lennon Moreno and Christian Lagarde. Anyways. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. why are we shouting out the, uh, the head of the European Central Bank? Because thanks to the IMF, Latin America has a vibrant economy today. The IMF would be the International Monetary Fund. But they just had uh, presidential candidates assassinated in, where is it, Argentina? Last week, Ecuador. within the last week. Two of Ecuador. them. Ecuador. Ecuador, too. What? Oh, Ecuador, too, huh? Wow. Turns out yeah. the pink revolution, uh, well, it was kind of a red revolution, but then it was a pink revolution. Mm-hmm. And now it's more of like a brown revolution because the blood has dried around the wound. You see? It's, it's dried around the wound. And although Ecuador is no longer really using their 2007 constitution. On the plus side, they now have six U.S. military bases in Ecuador. Take that, Rafael Correa. <laughs> and, and fortunately, thanks to those new U.S. military bases in Ecuador, the DEA is now fully able to completely manage drug trafficking in Ecuador and, and stop any competition from competing with them. Oh, finally. They've been working on that a while. And, uh, you know, there's one other thing in Ecuador, and that is um, Stephen Donziger represented the Shuar tribe uh, against Chevron, who uh, totally fucked up part of the Orellana province of Ecuador with their... uh, uh, environmental destruction and, you know, open cesspools of oil just left all over the jungle and everything. And uh, Stephen Donziger was actually able to get a, uh, get a ruling against Chevron. Uh, but guess what? Stephen Donziger didn't count on Chevron owning that fucking judge in New York, did you, buddy? <laughs> mm-hmm. How'd you like that year and a half of home incarceration for i'm not even sure what the how how the fuck did they make that happen but what, nonetheless what um they got the ruling by the judge against chevron to pay ecuador for environmental damages they got that ruling suspended and then managed to get stephen donziger arrested and jailed in new york for um I, i'm still not sure how the fuck they pulled that off hmm. but stephen donziger was the lead attorney and counsel for the shuar tribe of ecuador that had their shit totally fucked up by chevron which was originally unical you know the california mm-hmm. subsidiary of standard oil company yeah. um and i, I want to apologize to all those that have been reading the Rockefeller deep dive that Yona was writing up until a few weeks ago. Why is um, that? Uh, and, and that's because I had planned to keep writing an article every week, week after week after week. And there's been a hiatus of about a month or more where I've not written any more of the installments and, and I'm, I've got it to write. I've just been absolutely overwhelmed with trying to catch up on bills and just out there grinding and working and I've just not had the extra time to sit down and write because it takes time to write. Um, But I am getting back to that this week. I actually earlier today 
started writing on the Rockefeller thing again. So I just wanted to get oh, that nice. in. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna finish what I started there. I've just got so many irons in the fire, and I've really been doing a tremendous amount of uh recording and, and music here lately, which has just completely overtaken my journalism stuff. Um, but uh of course we've got a lot more um agent stories and a lot more footage that we're going through out there for for those that that love that stuff that uh that uh i film and then drizzle edits and and perfectly packages together um uh we've got a lot of stuff going on in there so things to look forward to to the future moving forward we've got the rockefeller article that i'm going to finish up here um it's like you're reading my mind, Ben. Because the next question that I was going to ask you is, what is the next thing that we can look forward to from the Hyona? And you just answered that question before I even had a chance to ask it, which is just absolutely incredible. <laughs> We're going to uh, stop the recording here for you know the publishing and the post-production and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go anywhere, Yona. So uh, last words for the folks who are going to be listening to this later. What is the most important thing that you have to say right now? Well, that is to go with your gut. Trust your instinct. Um, more and more, we continue to be bombarded with messages Uh infantilizing your own intellect discounting your own intuition uh, ignore all of that i mean the, the the thing that i enjoy the most about grand theft world in general uh is the care concern and respect that we have as broadcasters uh for our audience and that we don't infantilize our audience we don't talk down to our audience. Um, and I think that's what distinguishes Grand Theft World from some other independent media spaces uh, in that uh, we respect our audience uh, to be able to put these things together. Uh, and it's overall a sort of a forensic approach and providing, providing you with all the reference materials citations reading materials um you know like richard grove's brain maps showing how these things are interconnected um of course uh you know what what i like about drizzle's approach with liberty radio is how we're able to bring into this sphere the incredible underground music scene that is also amplifying these uh, important concepts of awareness that all of us are, are now able to see and appreciate. Again, we may not all agree upon the current situation or the causes or where it's going, but it's about the awareness and the respect for one another to be able to have an adult conversation about these things and not sink to shit library or the other the other flavors of following instead of leading because i like to think that our group in general is autonomy focused and leadership focused and that it, it's it's kind of cool when we all get together on town halls and forums and other things because it's a whole room full of leaders rather than a whole room full of followers trying to figure out who do we follow blindly next. We're all thinking for ourselves and we're all doing for ourselves and doing for each other. That's what characterizes the strength of our online community here. And, and I just see Grand Theft World continuing to grow and grow and grow because it's not really about an ideology it's about, I think it has so much more to do about personal growth and internal growth 
because we're all trying to continue to become more adult. We're all maturing together in our understanding of how to improve our collective situation. It begins with awareness and recognizing the problems, but we've moved far beyond that. And we generally are constantly talking about solutions and what is already working in combating that, which, which is just levels beyond what so many of the other media organizations focus mm-hmm. on, which is more of the tabloid nature and just spin the wheels and doesn't this get you to grind your gears? And, and instead we're like, hey, this is actually working and this is how we're already kicking ass. Try doing this. And and so, you know, I keep getting, <laughs> I keep losing channels. The last thing I would say uh, with my interview this time is I finally broke down, started a fourth YouTube channel. And now I'm building a fourth YouTube channel. If you want to go over and subscribe to <sighs> DJ Hyona. Thank at you YouTube, um, which the link's down there. You can go and become the 23rd or 24th subscriber to my YouTube channel. <laughs> but uh, amazingly, the first song that I recorded coming out of jail <laughs> or fart noise, um, I put that thing up on YouTube. At the time, I had 19 subscribers. And within 10 hours, it had over 800 views. I saw that. And so I'm going to say that's the first bona fide viral Yona song that's ever hit the airwaves. Um, And I think of all the other uh, intellectual songs I've put together. And, you know, at, at first blush, I thought this is the stupidest, dumbest, silliest song I've ever made. What the fuck was I thinking? But, you know, after listening to it about a thousand times now, it's it's a real earworm. It really, it's a real earworm. Mm-hmm. And I realized that it, that's a truth song. Mm-hmm. That is a truth song because everything in it is true. Everything in that song is based upon true an actual real event. Mm-hmm. And, and it's good to remind yourself that there is an incompetent, raping, racist pedophile of a piece of shit that is our allegedly our country's most popularly elected president in all of recorded history. Right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, for the third time, and the first guest to appear for a third Liberty Radio interview, that is indeed a record. The man, the myth, the legend himself, the DJ, Hi Yona. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be a little difficult uh, to top this one with the next Liberty Radio interview, but... Uh, we we are going to try. So uh, everyone in the audience is just going to have to tune in for that whenever it takes place, and we'll see you then. Just keep an eye out, folks, as you're following the election. Don't get distracted by fucker or booby. Listen to Sheba. <laughs>